The Reluctant Dragon, based on the story by Kenneth Graham. One evening, long ago, a shepherd ran home, terrified. I saw something terrible, he cried to his wife and son. It's as big as four horses. It has long, sharp claws, a long, pointy tail, and shining blue scales all over his body. His son looked up from his book. That sounds like a dragon, he said. A dragon? yelped the wife. A dragon, said the shepherd. They are not so good. The boy wasn't scared. The next day he set off up the hill to find the dragon. Bye, don't worry. He might be friendly, thought the boy. The dragon was friendly, and he was thrilled to see the boy. It's beautiful here, but it does get lonely. The boy smiled. He sat down and asked the dragon all kinds of questions. The dragon told stories of long, long ago. There were dangerous dragons everywhere, and brave knights fought them to rescue princesses. The boy came back every day to hear the stories. But then the villagers found out about the dragon. They were terrified. The boy ran straight to the dragon. The villagers want to get rid of you, he panted. But I wouldn't hurt a fly. That afternoon, the boy heard even worse news. Who's here? Who's here? Saint George, the dragon killer. He's going to fight the dragon. The boy rushed back to the dragon. Saint George, the dragon killer, wants to fight you. Gasped the boy, and he has the longest spear I've ever seen. But I don't like fighting. I'll just hide in my cave until he goes away," said the dragon. "You can't!" cried the boy. "Everyone wants a fight." The dragon yawned. "I'm sure you'll think of something," he said. The boy walked slowly back down to the village. He eats ten sheep for breakfast. A crowd of villagers were telling George about the dangerous dragon. He burned down five houses. It's not true," said the boy. "The dragon wouldn't hurt a fly." But everyone wants a fight," said George. "What can I do?" "Follow me," said the boy, and he took George to meet the dragon. "What a perfect place for a fight." Said George, "No fighting," said the dragon firmly. "Not even a pretend fight," asked the boy. "Maybe," said the dragon. The boy turned to George. "Do you promise not to hurt him?" "Well, it has to look real," said George. "Will there be a feast afterwards?" asked the dragon. "There will, and you can come." Promised George. The next morning, lots of villagers arrived to watch the fight. The boy waited nervously by the dragon's cave. They cheered and waved when Saint George rode into the view. But where was the dragon? Then a roar echoed around the hills. Flames filled the air. Everyone gasped as the dragon appeared. His scales sparkled, and he breathed out fire. Charge! cried George. He galloped hard, his spear held high. The dragon bounced up, and they shot past each other. Missed! yelled the crowd. George and the dragon turned around and charged again. This time there was no way they could miss. Clatter, bang, off! The dragon slumped to the ground. George towered over him. Cut off his head! I think the dragon has learned his lesson. George declared. Let's invite him to our feast. 
and he led the villagers, the boy and the dragon, back down the hill. The boy was happy because his plan worked. The villagers were happy because they'd seen a fight. George was happy because he'd won. The dragon was happiest of all. He had lots of new friends and a very full stomach. Jolly night it's been, he murmured and began to snore. How will I get him home? said the boy. I'll help, said George. He gave the dragon a prod. And they set off up the hill arm in arm, the saint, the dragon and the boy.